from the Clark Ford Studio in Oxford, Mississippi, MBW Digital proudly presents the Oxford Exxon Podcast. I'd say thanks for tuning in, but why am I going to give you a round of applause for something you're supposed to do, to be frank? And now, here are your hosts, Chase Parm. And broadcast school has really paid off. And Neil McCrady. I deserve to be on TV. Friday edition of the Oxford Exxon podcast as we give you every single Friday. It is an audio recording of our live show that happened at Funkies on the Oxford Square last night. Isaac Gross, former Ole Miss defensive lineman 2012 to 2016, joined us. So uh, hang around. We talked to him a good bit about his career, certain games, certain seasons, and then also during recruiting how he thinks a couple changes could have impacted his uh, his football future. So a lot of good stuff with Isaac, great guy, joining us there on stage at Monkeys last night. And uh, every single day, this podcast is brought to you by the Oxford Exxon Highway 6 West in Oxford. we got the Speed Pass Plus app. We've got the um, mobile rewards from Exxon as well. Download those. Save money is what this is all about with all Blue Sky locations in Mississippi. Next door to that, we got the Oxford Crystal Announcing today, they're now on Landshark. Oxford Crystal going to uh, to be delivering to you. So those uh, those things from those guys. And then, of course, Clark Ford in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900, Highway 25 South as, uh, as well. So give them a call. Corey will uh, get you a quote within 15 minutes. And when you're done with the deal, tell them about the podcast when you do that. $500 off from Clark Ford there in Amory. And then finally, we gave away another gift certificate to Blue Delta Jeans last night, courtesy of those guys. Great people, great products. Neil and I both had them on last night. Some people in the audience had them on as well. So uh, time for you to get some also. And again, every single Thursday, we give away a $200 gift certificate to Blue Delta for answering our trivia question. It was an Isaac Gross-themed trivia question last night, as it usually is for our guests. So, uh, that and much more. So sit back and we'll uh, now bring you the uh, podcast from Thursday night. Neil McCready, myself, and Isaac Gross. Welcome to another week here at Funkies. Chase Parm, Neil McCready, Isaac Gross joining us this week. Former Ole Miss defensive lineman, 2012 to 2016. We'll talk to him a pretty good bit today, as always, for uh, these shows. will be in audio form on the website on all the places you enjoy podcasts including itunes on friday morning we're going to give away our gift certificate from blue delta jeans that we do every single week got a uh, got an isaac gross trivia question coming for you here in a little bit for uh that one as well mr mccready on his fourth podcast of the day i believe he's a little tired we'll get through this thing as we get going but isaac uh thanks for giving us a little time today good to good to see you after a couple years now Man, yeah, thanks for having me, man. Howdy, tidy. So we're going to get into it a little bit. I'm curious here, though, because I, I, we mentioned you were on the board, uh, mentioned on the board that you were going to join us tonight, and everybody talks about you uh, playing defensive tackle, playing nose guard at the weight you played it at, the quickness you have. I, I want to start there. What was the lightest and the heaviest that you played nose tackle in the SEC at from a weight standpoint? Um, the lightest I played was uh, 235, and the heaviest I played was uh, – I got up to like 267. 267. 235. 235. So for the longest time, everyone, I remember talking to you. I remember talking to Jarrell Poe all the time about losing weight. And I remember talking to you all the time about gaining weight. Why was it so hard for you to gain weight? Because that's a problem that so many of us wish that we had. I, I don't know. Um, when I played, I was so active. Like, even in practice, I'd be doing push-ups, running down the field, um, in linebacker drills, um, before practice doing DB drills. I, I don't know. I just stayed active. I ate. I ate good, but I just, I just well, always stayed active. That was my question. So what did you do in an attempt to – I know that the coaches were on you to gain weight, gain weight. What did you do to attempt to gain weight? Take us through – like, I always think about, like, Michael Phelps. We were talking – the swimmer. We were talking about his diet uh, earlier in the week for God only knows what reason. What did you do? In, I mean, what was kind of like your typical day back then when you were trying to gain weight, knowing you were going to be active and you had practice and all that stuff, but you're still trying to put in calories so that maybe you can put pounds on? Um, actually, this is a true story. Um, I, like I said, I had a good friend that um, I found. I had this. I want to say I got up to like 260 the year I got hurt. 
And um, Coach always said, you know, you're going to have to build. Matter of fact, Pat, the trainer, said you're going to have to build as much muscle you can to, um, to survive after this surgery because it's going to be six months before you can do anything else. And I want to say I was like two, around my 240 range, and uh, I was like, man, what I'm going to do? I don't, I don't know what to do. Like, I have a problem with gaining weight. I work out hard. I run hard, and it just, um, it just don't work. So I changed my uh, workout routine, and I had a good friend that uh, I always wanted to work out. And uh, like I said, I, he, was, he would be cooking all the time. Um, I cook, like I said, I eat a lot, but it just my metabolism was so high. I'm a high energetic person that I would burn it all so fast. But um, like I said, I um, bought me some protein, went to GNC, bought me some protein, and um, it went in from there. I would take it from sun up to sun down, Debbie cakes, and um, like I had to eat those oatmeal pies and fudge rounds, man. And uh, <laughs> like I said, eating later at night, but it really went from. Had the normal workout, like, you know, during the season, you know, you only, we don't get to work out that much, but, you know, the gym always open for you. And uh, I want to say that year I really gained that weight was, I, that year I had got hurt, I would, I would work out in the morning. I had a class Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 that I lift weights at. Uh, take my protein in the morning before that class. After that class, I wasn't practicing at the time because I was hurt. So that evening, I would, uh, in practice, I'd be working out. And then that night, um, I always say his name, Kendrick, man. He, uh, we'll link up and we'll go straight to the workout ring that night. And like I said, it was just a steady pace for a whole year before I actually had to have that surgery. And before I knew it, I looked up. I was, I was almost 270 pounds, and he had just got all his weight up. He was almost 270 pounds. We was fascinated by it. And i like, yo, I, I want to keep getting bigger, you know. So... Like I said, the workout routine, um, staying focused, staying, picking my eating habit up, and um, I guess not just being as busy as I was. I wasn't practicing at the time, so I guess that's how it's happened. Because when you were at 235, I know you were an elite athlete, but the guys you're going up against in the SEC are elite athletes as well. And so when they're 300 pounds and you're 235 pounds, I know you won your share of those battles, but you went into a lot of those with – pretty limited chance of having a, a chance to succeed, right? I mean, when a guy's got 65 pounds on you and he's either the athlete you are or close to the athlete you are. Man, in the, in the SEC, I went in there with no chance at all. <laughs> <laughs> I went in there with no chance at all. But uh, face, just facing old guys every game, and when we walked up to the line of scrimmage, man, it, it would just be that look they give me like, you know what I'm saying? It would just be that look they, they look at me like, I ain't no way, you know what I'm saying? Like I can't believe it. But I, after some of the after some of the season, uh, some of the games, um, guys used to tell me, uh, like, uh, man, we the coach used to talk uh, talk about you all the time. You the best lineman they got. Like you, like you you gonna give up your all. Your effort is tremendous, and you gonna you gonna you gonna apply the pressure the whole game at your side. I one one moment I can never forget. Uh, my freshman year, I was uh, we was in Alabama. I was actually 248 my freshman year. I was 248, and uh, Coach Kiffin, uh, we came we we came out the uh, tunnel, you know, Alabama, you know, they professional. It wasn't even no booze or nothing. They just we just ran out the tunnel, went to the sideline. Then all of a sudden, Alabama get ready to come out, and then the stadium rocking. I was I was so excited. Like Coach Kiffin just came over and grabbed me. He was like, Hey, hey man, you ready? Come. I was just up and down like a little jackrabbit. He was just like, Yo. Gross, you gotta calm down. You gotta calm down. He said, "You ready?" Grab me by, he like grab me by my head and looking at me face to face, forehead to forehead. Man, you ready? I said, "Coach, I'm ready. I'm ready. Put me in." Just like that, the first play of the game, Tiger uh, Eddie Lace. Well, I actually tripped uh, for a TFL, the first play of the game. The second play of the game, I got a TFL on Eddie Lace, and it was like I said, it just I just I always rose up to the uh, challenge, man. But, I mean, it meant you had to be as technical sound, as quick as possible to make up for it, though. So, I mean, when you're, when you're 235, you're 240, you're 245, I mean, what, what was the keys there? Because, I mean, you probably saw a double teams occasionally, depending on what the play was. You're obviously dealing with guys bigger than you. I and mean, what, what was the key to be able to use that quickness and actually make some plays at that weight? Well, ever since I've been playing in position, um, by the grace of God, I was given this position by one thing, my quickness, that first step. 
And uh, I, just, I would just say, you know, with coach teaching me the techniques and uh, they learn, I'm learning the defensive schemes and I'm learning how to watch the linemen if it's a pass play or a run play on how they set. It just, it, it all made sense to me so early. So that quickness, that it's just like a fight, you know. If, if you hit first, you know, so if you don't want to get hit first in the fight. So if I attack first, I always, you know, felt like I had a pretty good chance of winning. You know, if I attack this big guy before he get to moving, he'll never be able, you know, moving so quickly on him, he'll never be able to, to establish his foundation. A double team, if I, if I get in the hole right now, they'll never have a chance to get shoulder to shoulder and double team me and to get me out the pocket. So with that being said, it was just, like I said, to attack first, you know, hours of film, countless hours of film, and just listen to the coaching, you know, knowing where to place your hands, knowing what technique to use, and being kept, like watching the, um, watching the sets, like the run, you gonna know, and, and you know, always paying attention to down the distance, you know, if it's if it's first and ten, nine times ten, SEC, we, somebody gonna run the ball, you know, but if it's third and six, they gonna throw the ball. So like I said, it was just, it was just common sense and just being an athlete. Why don't you take me through it a little bit? We're going to go through some games, some seasons, some different things. I mean, I, I remember seeing you, Neil and I, from junior days when you were probably in 10th grade at South Panola. You've been around for years. I don't necessarily remember it. I, I think it was kind of a foregone thing. You were going to end up at Ole Miss during uh, the recruiting and stuff. So they're going through that 2-10 and ten year. That 2-10 and ten years, your senior year of high school, when you're committed and you're waiting to get there, were you solid all the way through? What kind of you thinking about the program? And what, what, what's on your mind at that point as it looks like this thing's unraveling under Houston Nutt? Uh, before, before I can say how solid I was, I, can, uh, I go back to the athletes that were made at my time during uh, my years at, in high school. Mm -hmm. um, me, Nick Brazel, Antonio Connor, and Tamario Strong, a lot of those guys, we all made uh, – a pack that we, we were going to follow each other no matter what. And it started with uh, Nick Brazel. And uh, I can remember that 2-10 and 10 season, it's raining and Alabama blowing us out the water. And only person you really seen that game just making plays, making plays, making plays was Nick Brazel. And I was like, yo, that's, that's my family out there doing that. And uh, the stands was getting empty. The stands, everybody was leaving, the rain coming. Uh, you know, noticeable scenes like the Sanquez and uh, Trent Richardson play, you know, things like that were happening during this game. And all I could see was, you know, Nick Brazel making no plays. Uh, he's from where I'm from. And, like, that pack is still strong. So that 2-10 thing, it, was, it wasn't never about, you know, I'm, I was a rebel no matter what. You know, the guys before us that came, the um, Parade, the John Jerry, the Jamarcus Sanford, Eddie Strong, like, it was just a, it was just a pack, you know, and it, it was, it was just. I always thought, you know, I, I wanted to play for the Rebels, you know, and there was always the team first, you know, there was always the head team first. But uh, before I could just talk about how strong it was, my heart was, I was sold. I was, uh, I was going to Bama, like I was actually going to Alabama, and uh, Coach Saban told me where he was going to play me. And um, I felt like that was going to be the best fit because I would have never, I would have never ever had my hands in the ground again if I would have went to Alabama. What do you want to do with you? He was going to stand me up outside linebacker, defensive end. He said, uh, my body type, the way I'm going to grow. He said, you'll get bigger, but you're not going to grow into an NFL defensive tackle. You're going to grow into an a NFL linebacker and uh, out edge rusher with your first step. I don't. He said, you're not going to play nose guard, which at the time I was 270 pounds and. My my senior year in high school, so he he just always told me that I wasn't gonna uh, I wasn't gonna play nose, but um, I don't know. I come back, like I said, I started to I actually decommitted from Ole Miss when Coach Nutt left. I didn't know much about Coach Freeze. I actually didn't know the guy at all. And uh, like I said, man, it, it it go back to that it go back to that pack. And um, I went to the Under Armour game, the Mississippi Alabama game, and started there with uh, me and Channing Ward, and of course, Anthony Alford later came, and my guy, Tamario Strong, was there too. So it, it all started right there. And then all of a sudden, uh, me and Channing went to the Under Armour game. We met Trey Elston, and you know, it, it just skyrocketed. Like, okay, we're going, uh, it looked like we might finna be going to Ole Miss. You know, Channing Ward talked to me a lot 
at down there. He even committed to Ole Miss at that time at the game. And I had got a sack. I sacked Chad Kelly and throw it up the land shot. Really? So, yeah. So, um, like I said, man, it was an exciting process, man. But, like I said, it was bumpy at first. But, like I said, I, I made the right decision. You mentioned Nick a couple times here. From a pure athletic standpoint, I mean, the first day he got to Ole Miss, I thought NFL corner, that's that's where that guy was showing up. Is there another example of anybody more than him of just having the athletic ability and something not working out like that on the football field? Uh, for, in the past or not? Just in general. Yeah. In general, it, it uh, evenly match uh, Antonio Conn. Yeah. Evenly match, man. And I'm not just saying this because – we grew up um, together and we, we, you know, raised together, nothing like that. I'm saying this because, you know, anybody in the country can tell you about these athletes. You know, everybody saw it. Everybody saw it. So, you know, I just always had to pay homage to those guys because I thought those guys was great, you know. Took a break in this podcast to tell you it's brought to you in part by GNM Pharmacy there on South Lamar in Oxford. They deliver local in the Oxford area and it's flu season, so time to go in Get that flu shot. You can walk into GNM, $0 copay, $25 with no insurance. They're Monday through Friday. Walk-ins, definitely welcome there, and they accept most insurance plans. So take care of yourself. Head on over to GNM Pharmacy for that and all your other pharmaceutical needs. Podcast also brought to you by Community Mortgage, Oxford, Memphis, Soto County, and Chattanooga. All underwriting and processing is in Memphis. They're getting local underwriting that understands your market, a leader in condo financing, and the float down option. So you lock in that rate. If it goes down, you get the lower rate. If it goes up, you stay with your original rate. 662-234-2704 or JLO, J-L-O-W-E at communitymtg.com. Podcast also brought to you by Oxford Wine and Spirits. It's the weekend, so head on over, spend $150 or more. Mention the podcast. They take 10% off liquor, 5% off wine in addition to the 5% they are below industry standards as it is. The selection gets better every single day. Some new bourbons in. They've got all the Cathead products and much more. So that's on College Hill Road next to Lost Pizza. That's Oxford Wine and Spirits. And then finally, even though there's not a football game in town, Oxford is the place to be. Go sit on a balcony, have a cocktail, get dinner at a number of great restaurants in town, and check the calendar of events. You can do that at visitoxfordms.com. Slash events. The Wizard of Oz is at the Ford Center October 21st. You got the Oxford Art Crawl, another edition of that on October 23rd. You got the Nutcracker coming in November, the 10 Minute Festival, and much more. So take advantage of Oxford even when the football team is away. And to find out more, again, that's visit OxfordMS.com. And if Tony doesn't get banged up, he probably is in the NFL still to this day. There's no doubt. That, 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 nope. that knee went on him and changed his nope. whole deal. No Why question. do you think it didn't work out with Nick? What do you, what do you think happened ultimately there? You know, sometimes we just we get put in uh, certain, certain situations, man, that we actually might we might need people to uh, pull us out of. And instead of letting us, I know we're young adults, we're young men, and life is all about decisions. But sometimes, sometimes you you need that uh, role model, a mentor to come in and snatch you away. And I feel like at the time, him. Nick Brothers was like one of my role models, and uh, he didn't have nobody that could uh, pull him away because he was he was the guy. Everybody, like I said, I go back to say, you know, everybody know at that time he was. Everybody wanted a piece of him. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so, so you mentioned you don't know Hugh. You signed 2012. We all saw the first meetings and things. Obviously, when he was uh, when he was hired. I mean, you're not here yet for that, but. What allowed that thing to turn around so quickly? Because we always talk about 2012, probably Hughes' best coaching job of any of his seasons, the way he was able to galvanize everybody, pick them back up, get to the six wins and different things that were necessary for recruiting classes. So, I mean, early on, I mean, t- take me through it. I mean, what, what, what was it about Freeze that was able to kind of pull everybody together to trust him in those situations? One thing, one thing I, I like to start off saying that, uh, you know, Cole Freeze is a great coach, man. Great guy, man. We we all was in love with Coach Freeze. But I think Coach Freeze and that staff speciality was was matching the characteristics together. He matched the right people together. And once we all – because I, I saw it. Like the 2011 year, it, the guys was spread it. They was – you know, they just wasn't together. And for that senior class to come back, 
with stayed with under Coach Freeze, and when the freshmen came in, like my class came in, man, we we was we just nick tight real quick, and I, I I really feel like his 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 uh, character identification, like identifying character in us young men, like you know we we all had that same dream, and we all want to play football, like no matter what, we all we want to go to the next level, and we want to win games. And he matched us in our attitudes, matched each other. And I think, you know, Coach, I mean, everybody know Coach had the plays. Everybody had, know Coach Free had the, um, the what I'm trying to say, uh, charisma, whatever. But uh, like I said, great coach, man. But I feel like his greatest asset was the ability to uh, recruit and match the players together. You guys beat Auburn to break the losing streak that year from the, whatever the SEC streak was. You get Arkansas a week or two later. Did it take a win? I mean, did it take a certain game? Was there a moment where you said, hey, everybody's, everybody's in here. We're, 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 we're trying to get, you know, get this thing moving quickly in this direction. I'm talking about from day one. When I, when I was able to sign my name on the SEC uh, um, scholarship, nothing else mattered. We have to beat SEC teams. Um, everybody else we face is just going to, you know, we, we're not going to e- underestimate them, but uh, we're here to play in the SEC and get a, go shoot for the title. And uh, like I said, it just, go back, it just go back to that, man. We got that first SEC win. Um, like I said, those guys went 2-11 the year before us. And now we're freshmen come in and be a part of this with these seniors. Like I said, that bond made us so tight. And that first SEC win, it was just – it was so much energy. It was so much, it was, man. It was just the joy. Like it was just okay. All right, one down. It's time to get some more. It was just that 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 taste of winning in the SEC, becoming relevant for one weekend. Let's do this weekend week out. What what sticks six years later with you from uh, the win over Mississippi State? They come in. They're already bowl eligible. You guys needed that one to get bowl eligible and. Dante goes off, think scores three touchdowns that night. It's one freezes play out of love, pregame speech, and everybody still remembers a few years later now. What, what sticks out to you from, from that game that, for a lot of reasons, seems to be pretty important in the elevation of the program? I think, I think for a while the second half myth stayed on us. And for the first – well, on Ole Miss for the longest. And my first year – and. Like I said, seeing those guys who have been here to continue fight and to actually not give up. Like, like I said, I go back to this. It was a 2-11 and 11 team before. And watching everybody do their job and playing at a high level like we're supposed to just, just, made, just made everything in that game. And um, Dante went up and made that play, man, that game. And it was just like, we here. Uh, six and five season. We here. It don't. It don't matter. Like we we building now. And uh, like I said, it just it just was time. It was time. I mean, we we been we had a win one week, and all of a sudden we'll lose the next week. Nah, man. It, that's we getting rid of that old miss. We going back to the great old miss. And I, I guess you know, like I said, Coach Coach Free stood firmly on that, and he preached that, and that that's what he that's what he wanted for us. That's what he wanted for this state. And I was just like a you know. A little kid opening up Christmas gift because I'm from Mississippi, and it was just, I was just so no matter what. It's about Mississippi and bringing Mississippi to the top of the food chain. I'm all for it. Yeah, for you guys, Birmingham probably felt like the Rose Bowl for that I first mean, bowl game, didn't it? I mean, you know, Pitt had been there a couple years in a row. It looked like they weren't they weren't real crazy about it, but y'all are all in that week. Man, you know, <laughs> I almost had an interception that game. Like every year, Coach Kiffin could tell you every year that I was able to play in a bowl game. I was trying to get the MVP of the bowl game. I wanted the MVP of the bowl game so bad. Like, the defensive MVP, I wanted it so bad, and I tried. I tried. Every year I end up tying with somebody. I just like the year we played Georgia Tech, I tied with D.T. Shackford. Um, the year, my freshman year, I had, I had like two, I had like two um, batted balls. I had a pass deflection, uh, forced farmer, farmer recovering like six tackles like four of them solo so like i said it's like that bowl game i always i always tried to get the mvp i wanted that trophy like i actualize i love them i just i you know that years from now i just want a lot of things on my wall that i can show my kids that i did you know that means something to me 
All right, since you mentioned bowl games, and we'll go back, we'll go back into the 14 season in a minute. But since you mentioned bowl games, <laughs> what what happened in Atlanta? <laughs> Did, did you guys go out the night before and just stay out till four or five in the morning? I mean, what happened that that night before? Because you guys hardly showed up for that game, which was completely Look, un, unlike that I, team all season. I don't, I don't understand what that saying. That <laughs> I always saw Ole Miss players out all night. I, man, that that was hogwash. What Cole Free would like to say, <laughs> that was hogwash. But uh, nah, man. It's, Man, okay, I tell you what, I remember that night. Yeah, yeah. I remember that night. That night, Georgia said we was in Atlanta, man. We finna play T- the Horn Frog the next day. Bro, we was so happy we was in, uh, we, we finna play in a big a New Year's Six. It, yeah. It, it, well, it wasn't a New Year's Six bowl. Yeah, 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 it was but, a beach bowl. But yeah. we, we were so happy. It was a big bowl. We were so happy, man. Everybody was so excited. And I wouldn't say we was out all night, but we was in the hotel up. Like, the, the energy, cause it, we couldn't stop. Like, we was just... We were just overly excited. Now, it might, I, like I said, I can't, I can't, I don't know exactly where did they get that player was out all night. Right. I mean, they even said some player with the Atlanta Hall chili. Like, I was like, I, don't, I just don't <laughs> get it. Like, where did that come from when I know all of us, majority, was in the hotel, if not sleep? Like I said, the QBs were there, the old line was there. Don't forget now, we got, we got, we're going to have uh, freshmen there that are red shirt. They're going to go have fun. And at the time, some of those freshmen became big name players, you know. So, um, like I said, I, we that when we played TCU, man, it's like TCU they hit us in the mouth early. Like yeah. I remember jumping off the ball. I'm talking about, I'm in the backfield just like that quickly. I'm finna give me a sack. Tyrone Borkin by himself. He just dish it off. Like and it, it was it was like it, they just hit us in the mouth quickly. It wasn't that we went. The plays when called, it was just we was totally unprepared. Like that was such a roller coaster of a season. You guys get the huge win over Alabama that was probably the program defining win at the time. Mm-hmm. You 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 beat uh, Texas A and M a week later in College Station. You blow out Tennessee at home. You have that crazy game. I go to crazy. It was just an intense game in Baton Rouge where you just couldn't score and you lose that game. And then you have that back and forth Auburn game where Laquan gets hurt. You get blown out at Arkansas. Everybody thinks they're done. You beat Mississippi State. It was just such a weird year. It was a, I mean, highs and lows. There was never any middle ground when you look back on it, right? I mean, it was the highest of highs and the lowest of lows and kind of nothing in between. I, I, I don't care how good our season was or how bad our season was. We go LSU and Arkansas. For some reason, the referee hates us. <laughs> uh, LSU game, the referee tried to put me out. The Arkansas game trying to put me out. I don't know. They just, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't want to blame nothing on the referee because everything is put in between the, pl- the pines. But sometimes in those games like that, man, but where it looked like you know we should have won and things just get out of hand all of a sudden, like come, it's, some, it's a 12th man out there, you know, and it, it might be a 13th with a back judge, a judge and a corner judge that ain't seeing the right thing. You, you guys saw all sorts of crazy that year. I mean, Vaughn Hemingway's never been crazier than it was the day of the Alabama game, and Tiger Stadium was nuts that night. What's, it, what's the difference between being at home in one of those games and being in a white jersey on the road in one of those games? Fireworks. LSU. I would never forget it. Playing a night game at LSU. I, I say this like my greatest experience of all time. Like, when you come out, when you come out this stadium and uh, the everybody booing you, the tiger over there rocking the stage, growling at you, and you run into the sideline, and all of a sudden it just get dark and it's just boom, boom, like the fireworks going off. And uh, LSU come out. He's like, this, we on the big stage. Like this, this what we hear. This why we here. This is the atmosphere. This is the electricity. This is the passion. This is the dream. This is why you come to the SEC. And this is why you choose the schools you choose. And like I said, playing at home was always great because you got a, a sense of urgency to protect. You know, you don't want nobody to come in here and steal no dignity from you. You don't want to lose. You don't want to give up anything. So playing at home is always something that is something that is so serious. But I, I can never forget, like, Alabama was a great place to play. Their, their fans are professional. They got loud when they needed to, not just all the time. LSU is chaos. 
24-7. I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. Uh, I want to say, uh, what's his name, Aquaman was with um, Arkansas when we played them because it always rained when we yeah. go to <laughs> yeah. when we go to Arkansas. It's just like somebody just cut the sprinkles on and just cut the faucet on and don't never uh, cut it off. It's just like, come on, man. What I remember about that game, Isaac, was it was so cold and it was wet and it was pregame. And uh, I looked down on the field and you guys all looked miserable. And they were jumping around crazy and I thought, this is not going to go well. He just had that feeling, you know what I mean? That they, one yeah. of those days where you could just tell in pregame. That doesn't happen often, but I, it, it happens occasionally where you just see it. Man, I'm telling you. It's like, first of all, it was cold. And it was then, really cold. Yeah. It was the coldest rain I can ever remember. I mean, you, you, being a football player, you prepare yourself for anything, man. But like I said, it was so cold, and it was – like it was sprinkling, then all of a sudden, man, we come out, we come out of the um, tunnel, man, and it's like, who, who did that? Who cut that rain on like that? It just it got bad. But I could, let me tell you about that Arkansas game. I would never forget. Coach Kiffin said all week long, "Do not miss this sack." It was, a, I forget the name of the formation, but it's just a center and a quarterback, and the rest of the team is over there. It was, it was me, the center, the quarterback. And uh, I think it was a linebacker behind me. All right, one on one, you'll never be. Man, I I beat the I beat the center so fast and got it was raining. Got right back there, sacked the quarterback. I'm talking about the whole team is to the left, the formation, everybody running back. I guess they were gonna try to throw a quick pass over there, or whatever. Man, the whole team was over there, and uh, our whole team just me and the running back, me and the linebacker, and. I jumped off that ball, man, so quick, got to that quarterback, and all he did was just shifted his shoulders forward, and I slipped, like, right past. It was just me and him, and he run up the field for, like, nine yards. Like, I almost get a first down. Coach drilled it in my head. We worked all week long. I was, don't miss this sack. You miss this sack, he going to go. Hey, what he, I think he said he's going to go for six or he's going to go for ten. And just like that, I missed that sack. I'll never forget it, but. That same game, I had a big uh, goal line stop. You know? I remember that, yeah. And yeah. early in the game, early, yeah. And that right there could have, could have. That right there really made a break that game for the, made a break, uh, broke the game for the simple fact. They like said, Coach Kiffin, when I came to the sideline, he said, "Did you jump offside?" I said, "Coach, you know I ain't jump offside." He said, "Well, we got offside." They reviewed it, reviewed it. C.J. Johnson. Not his helmet, but his face mask was outside. That's why I said, man, they just want us to lose. <laughs> hey, they called it back, man. Next play, they ran in and got a touchdown. But we had got a – I had caused the fumble. We had the fumble and everything, and they just – they called it back on us, man. It was sad, sad, man. The podcast is sponsored by Pinnacle Trust. Pinnacle Trust is based in Madison, Mississippi, but it represents clients in 24 states, has advisors in three states. Founded in 1997, Pinnacle Trust provides detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and much more. At Pinnacle Trust, investing is treated like a commodity, and decisions are made using objective information and research, not emotions. Regardless of your level of wealth, Pinnacle Trust will sit down with you, listen to your goals, study your expenses, and put forth a comprehensive, detailed financial and retirement plan. Cookie cutter financial planners put you in a box. At Pinnacle Trust, a box is built just for you. To learn more about Pinnacle Trust, go to pintrust.com. That's P I N N trust.com. Mention you heard about Pinnacle Trust on the podcast, and you'll get 10% off your first year's fee. Podcast is also brought to you in part by the Weston Jackson Restore Serenity to Your Soul. Visit Soul Spa, the ultimate luxury spa experience in downtown Jackson. Indulge in personalized massages, signature facials, soothing body treatments, and much more on their extensive spa list. Escape from the everyday and rejuvenate yourself in their luxury spa today. Then you can gather at Estelle Wine Bar and Bistro right there in the Weston Jackson, sip on a creative craft cocktail, or enjoy their curated wine list. Open for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch, Chef Caden's mission is to connect guests with the community through local partnerships. So gather at Estelle tonight. And the podcast is brought to you by John Edwards of Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. If you've been thinking about that golf trip with the guys you'll never forget, 
or maybe that anniversary trip she'll never forget. Whether you've dreamed of playing St. Andrews or sitting at a cafe in Paris, talk to John Edwards before you try to do it yourself. Why use John? Well, he's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners that allows John to supply his clients with added values and unique benefits that are simply not available to other travelers. John has traveled the globe for 37 years before getting into the travel business, so he knows the extra attention needed to make a special trip, one that creates a lifetime of unique memories. So if you're thinking about going with the boys to Pebble Beach or taking her to Napa for the vacation of her dreams, call John, give him some parameters and a budget, and let him give you some options. And know this, you don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. Call John, 901 901- 494-3387 or send him an email at jedwards at regencytravel.net. First-time clients can save $50 off their first booked trip just by telling John you heard about Regency Travel on the podcast. Let's take a break in and here for the Blue De- Delta Jeans trivia question of the night. Every single week that we're here, they offer a $200 gift certificate to Blue Delta for the answer of our trivia question. If you're in the house tonight, just uh, write it on a napkin, bring it up here. I'll hand you the gift certificate if you are correct. And you're the first person. If nobody in here answers it, it'll go to uh, go to Friday as we uh, go for the audio version. So Isaac Gross, he is number 10 all-time in school history and tackles for loss. Do you know that, Isaac? Do you know you were 10 all-time in your career? Yeah, I know that. You knew that? All right. So we got nine other ones on the top 10 list. Give me three of them. Three of the uh, top ten for tackles for loss, not including Isaac Gross is the trivia question tonight. If you can uh, get that up here, first one on a napkin and be correct, I'll hand you a uh, $200 gift certificate to Blue Delta Jeans for, uh, for doing that. So we're talking about the 14th season. Isaac, we, we, we glossed over Alabama. Probably ought to back up a little bit there. Sinquez gets the pick. They're doing the rep- the replay. Did you see it the whole time? Where where were you on the field? Kind of take me through what's going through your head during this five minutes. Man, I'm gas. I was gas at the time, but we had I was uh I was actually on the field at the time, and uh we I just had made a play like right before the drive even started. Like we actually had them like on a three and out. Then all of a sudden they just start moving the ball like crazy. Blake Sims starts scrambling, and uh. TJ yelled and picked up a few yards, and all of a sudden, man, all of a sudden, like I said, it it was just so crazy. I got back there late. Got back there late. Um, I want to say that was me and Shaq, or me and um, me and uh, Jason Jones. Got back there real fast. I'm talking about we got back there on the pressure. I'm talking about it had been. I want to say real fast. The guy had been lingering, and Blake Sims sitting in the pocket, and all of a sudden, it broke free. As soon as we got back there in his face, man, he just threw the ball up. And after that, all you can do is turn around and watch. Hope they don't catch it. And I forget, I forget the guy's name, but he went up, man. And O.J. Thought, Howard. O.J. Howard, tight end. We just knew. We just knew he had it, man. Well, I knew he had it because I was like, ain't no way. So we turn around, man. He coming down with the ball. And uh, St. Quay is right there in the inside of him. Oh, it was beautiful. And, uh, man, I'm talking about I couldn't even say anything. When St. Quiz picked that ball, I'm like, I got to go to the sideline. I'll celebrate it in a minute. <laughs> like, it was a long drive. Like, you know, that was a game-winning drive. And they, you know, it was, it was scarce. Like, they were finna do that. But, uh, I mean, you know, I'm going to get the rolling. They get the rolling. And they was coming down the field. And they came down right there at the last minute. And St. Quiz made an unbelievable play, man. On that same thought, when you miss the extra point twice, do you think, oh, my God, this thing's looking like 24-23 if we're not careful? Until, like I said, man, I'm, <laughs> until that clock hits zero, I'm going to keep I'm gonna keep going. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like it, it could be fourth quarter, the scope could be 20-0. to zero. I feel like we still got a chance. You know, I believe in the unside kicks, the interception, the safeties, and all that. So, you know. So, like I said, man, I, I just feel like we always had a chance. As long as the clock's still going, we had a chance, man. Mm-hmm. So, so it didn't take very long. Got a winner to the uh, trivia question tonight. The first napkin that I receive up here. Again, Isaac Gross, the number 10 career um, mark for an Ole Miss for tackles for a loss. Three of the uh, other ones on that list. That's what I asked for. Three other ones. Marquise Haynes, he is number one. Greg Hardy, he is number three. And then Cassius Ware, number four on that list. 
Number two on the list, Derek Burgess uh, as well for the uh, the top four. Number five, Parade Jerry Spinola uh, on that list as uh, as well. So you, uh, you you knew that you understood where you were on the on, oh, yeah, on, on the man. list, huh? I was actually upset, man. They said I was tied. I was tied tenth. I was like, ain't no way. I wanted to be in the top five. That was actually a goal of mine when I first got here. Like, um, was it really? Yeah, like, if I, like I thought I was gonna get a chance to uh, play the uh, the end. I actually was a uh, coach told me he was gonna move me if uh, when we get bigger bodies, and uh, I guess I was just so important in that middle that I I just stayed there. So that was actually a goal. I wanted to be the sack leader. I wanted to have the TFLs, but you know it, it started getting irrelevant when I learned like, yo, I'm a nose guard. <laughs> Like you said, I mean, it was family. Ole yeah. Miss was Ole Miss. Do, do you sometimes wonder, though, not even Alabama, but just even at Ole Miss, had you been that stand-up backer, played that defensive end the whole career, what it would be like right now? I mean, does that ever even cross your mind? Man, if I would have played defensive end, I'd be in top five. I would have been top five first-round pick, man. That's, that's what I always wanted to play. And when I started playing football, I actually started out playing Mike Linebacker. And when I got to junior high, I started playing defensive end. And I had I had already you know learned the moves. I knew how to swim. I knew how to dip. I knew how to bob swat. Like I was ready to play that position. Like even in practice, like I would be one on ones. I wouldn't lose in the one on. I went two. I want to say I probably went two years at Ole Miss without losing a one on one in practice until like I started suffering injuries. And of course, Larry Montonso was, was great. You know, but uh, like I said, it was just. I just, you know, if I get the chance to still pursue this dream now, you'll get to see it, you know. So were there ever discussions about moving the end? I mean, what, what, what was sort of that like over the course of the four years with that being something you wanted to do? I, like I, I go back to say it, man, that's, that's exactly what I want to do. Yeah. Like I, uh, I want to play defense end so bad. Like that's why I thought I was going. That's what I actually was recruited as. But uh, like I was recruited as a weak side defense end. But um, the type of defenses we ran, I guess, um, like I said, the type of defense we ran, the penetration and the blitzing and all that kept the, you know, me being a small guy, the linebacker stayed free. They just had to make a play. So with that being said, man, I felt like I was a big part of our defense and doing the penetration because I was in the backfield every play, no matter what team we played. So, um, like I said, I always, I, once I settled down and, uh, and thought about it, you know, in college, you're going to play where you need it. And uh, in the NFL, you get that chance, you're going to play where you best step. What do you think about the program today? I know you were around Matt Luke a lot during your, your, your tenure at, at Ole Miss. He was the offensive line coach. What do, you, what do you sort of think about where the program stands today when you look at it as an alum? Um, today, when I look at the program, I, I just think, man, I'd be like, man, you know, it ain't the coaches. Like I look at I look at Coach Luke, I look at um, Coach uh, Coach Crime, and I'll be like, man, those guys there, that offensive mindset in Coach Luke head, and that defensive mindset in Coach uh, Coach Crime head, they actually they actually one in the same. They actually approach the game the same way, and uh, and and I sit back and like I said, when I talk to some guys here, and I'll be like, man, it ain't all bad until you see the score. That's when it's bad, and. Uh, like I said, man, it's, guys just got to step up. It, you know, we set a standard here, and majority of that standard came with, um, you know, Landshark is coming with an attitude. You know, it's the attitude of how you be a Landshark or how you be a Rebel, NW or what, whatever the National Wild Outs are. But uh, it's the whole attitude of, you know, what you want to be. And um, I feel like it's good chemistry here. And... Um, you know, I feel like the toughness is here too, but the will and the want to of guys actually want it more than anybody they play and rising up to the guys that they facing in the SEC or anywhere that um, we'll be much better off. Biggest thing, the guy, we got a lot of injuries. And just because someone, you know, it's football, it's, it's going to happen, the next man up. Those um, the guys who's up now because of the key players are out. Because on defense we got a lot of key players that are down. So I, I really feel like these guys just you know I don't care you're a freshman. I don't care you're a sophomore. You don't you don't have these many snaps. You have to get out there and execute. You have to get out there and get that job done. You got to be well prepared no matter what. 
Ole Miss plays Arkansas in Little Rock Saturday night. It's been a weird series the last few years. The fourth and 25, the, the blown lead last year. As a player, when you're in a game like that, I know you don't think about that stuff as you get ready for the game, but as the game unfolds, do you, do you catch yourself thinking about here we go again when a game gets kind of weird in a series that's been weird? <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't know what a player won't think like that, but as a player that's locked in and here for the team and, uh, you know, going to do whatever to win, You'll think about it, but you won't give up. You'll get up off. You'll get up off that bench. You'll get up off that knee you take, and you'll put that water bottle down, and you'll go encourage. You'll go enlighten somebody. Hey, it's okay you dropped that pass. Hey, it's okay you didn't get that many yards. Hey, pat the QB on his back a few times. Pat the D, D lineman, linebackers on their back. Hey, go make that play now. Wrap up. Hey, defensive back, break the ball up. You know what I'm saying? So. With that being with that being said, man, you when you when you in those situations and the game is start to turn, it's 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 the fake, you know. You got it. We we a four quarter team. You work out all summer long for this, all fall for all spring, all fall for this. So you never quit, no matter what. If you quit on your team, you you shouldn't be here in the first place. You mentioned the fourth and twenty five real quick. I, I know that was the year that you had the neck injury. You weren't on the field. You uh. At the game, though, I mean, in the locker room and different things, I mean, what that thing ends, and that, that, that team rebounded so well. They beat LSU up really well. They, they go to start ball, get the big lead, hold it, end up in the Sugar Bowl. What allowed that team to bounce back like that, though? Because it did. It, it seemed like that thing right there could have gone off the rails after the loss to Arkansas. That's crazy, man. We lost. I, I just go back and touch on that real quick. I was on the sideline, and uh, I remember Dumb, Dumb our, uh, one of our – uh, strength guys had to grab me because offense uh, uh, one of Arkansas players ran to the sideline was you know like picking at us or whatever and I, I shoved him shoved him to the ground and dumb came and uh, really grab- yeah I was, I was furious I hate Arkansas you know not in that <laughs> manner but as a football team uh-huh. I, I hate I don't, I don't like nobody we play you know I want to win no matter what I don't care who it is but uh with um I, the guys is you know that play like you know. You know, that was when Kim D.C. came into his realm. Kim D.C. started to come into his realm. That um, Treadwell took another step, you know. And like I said, Breland, Breland Speaks had woke up, man. Uh, DeMarcus Gates had woke up, man. It was like, you know, and Chad, Chad Kelly, you know, it was like we always had the pieces, but it was just now deciding to use it, deciding to, okay, I'm, I, Coach, I, I give up. I'm buying in. Everything you say, I don't care what it is, I'm going to do it. If that's how it's supposed to be done, we're going to do it. And I felt like the team caught that attitude after that fourth and 25, and they just lit into their – and everybody we played after that. And it just was a nonstop process and then being the best team. You mentioned guys being focused up for certain teams, not liking certain teams. Cody Pruitt or C.J. Johnson? Who was more psycho the week of Mississippi State between the the, the, the two of those guys? <laughs> C.J. Johnson, hands down. <laughs> C.J. could not stand State for nothing. Like, I'm talking about it, to the point you can see, uh, after every play you can see the tears in C.J. eyes. Really? Like, I didn't even, it's, you know, I, I hate to say it, but I didn't even, I didn't even feel the rivalry like that. I, I only hated out-of-state team. Mississippi State, uh, I didn't even take – I didn't take a visit down there. Me personally, I didn't even know anything about State besides uh, Derrick Piggies, yeah, rel- yeah. relatives of mine and um, um, Kendrick. Uh, but other, other than that, like I said, man, C.J. Johnson, he, he hated that. He hated, he hated Mississippi State, man. It was just an ongoing thing. And, but when we played State, like I said, it, it clicked in. Like, we the best in the State. So, you know, I call it – Quick attitude, don't care. <laughs> was C- CJ build up to it all week? I mean, was it just, hey, it's on the schedule and here we go, or what? I mean, what was it like? All week long, it's total madness. Like, we we got we got state this week, you know what I'm saying? It's a guy getting the head slapped, like, coach is running us, like, coach, that, that, we've been winning all year. Okay, state finally here. I, you know what this mean? You know what this mean to the state? I can tell you, bro, I can hear freeze right now. Screaming to the top of the lungs, man. But uh, that week, I, I want to say that 
I, I want to say that's hell week for us. The week of uh, practicing for Mississippi State. If we can have a good year, or, or you know, we could have been down that year, but that year of Mississippi State is just like we we're getting ready to play in the national championship game. Like we are on it. Everything's on point. Like you you better be you better be in every 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 I better be dotted, every T better be crossed. So like I said, it, it's serious, man. And it was a big deal. A lot of people look into uh, next year. Ole Miss obviously lose a lot of guys, probably uh, even a couple underclassmen, obviously with Greg Little and A.J. Brown, maybe D.K. Metcalf. We're talking over here for the show. You think uh, next year could be a little better for Ole Miss than some people believe? Why is that? What do you kind of see as, a, as this thing moves forward? Honestly, honestly, yeah. Um, you know, anytime you are told before the, before the um, year even started that you have nothing to play for at the end of the year, it kind of puts you in a – Okay, you know what I'm saying, but we still compete. Mm-hmm. But it, it's it's a it's a le- it's a level of urgency that's not it's not over the top now because I have nowhere. No matter how good we play, I have nothing, no goal to reach at the end of the season. So with that being said, the the bowl ban is lifted, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, with the bowl ban being lifted, I'm sure the coach is gonna go out and make some great decisions. Some great guys this year gonna come on the board, and with all of these injuries we are facing. I believe we're going to have a lot of guys that's going to be prepared, better prepared for next year. for the And then like, we're not even deep in the season yet. You know what I'm saying? I know homecoming was last week, but the season, we, we still got a, a lot of games to go. Half of it to go. So Six that's, that's what I'm saying, man. I feel like we're going to have a lot of experience that should be ready to rock and roll next year. The podcast is brought to you by Grenada Nissan. If you're in the market for a Nissan vehicle, Grenada Nissan is the place to go. They've got everything you are looking for, whether it's a new Nissan, previously owned Nissan, leased deals as well. Uh, fantastic people. They've been with us for a long time, Gene and Sandy Grass. They'll take care of you just the way they've taken care of my family and me over the last 10 years. It's GrenadaNissanUSA.com. We're also brought to you by Harry Alexander. Harry is an Oxford-based REMAX legacy realty agent. He's been in Oxford more than four decades. No one knows the residential and condo market in Oxford better than Harry. Go to his site. He'll prove it to you. It's harryalexander.com. Click on the properties and neighborhoods tab. Filter through by what you are looking for and then send him an email. It's ha at harryalexander.com. He'll take care of the rest. Podcast also brought to you by Oxford University Bank. OUB, locally owned and operated right here in Oxford. When you deposit money at OUB, that money and the vast majority of the bank's profits go right back into the Oxford community. OUB gives you the comfort of home, all the benefits the big mega banks provide, all the technology and products you can want, all with the personal touch. When you call OUB, you speak directly with the live person, all without having to press 10 buttons and without a five-minute wait. OUB offers its customers the absolute best cash checking account. It's called Casasa. And with Casasa, OUB will pay customers 2.5% interest on their balances up to $50,000. And with Casasa, ATM fees nationwide are refunded. OUB also offers online bill pay and mobile check deposit using its online app. To learn more about OUB, check out liveoxfordbankoxford.com or call 662 634-6668. OUB is FDIC insured. And the podcast is brought to you by Megan Phillips with LAH Real Estate. She's the person to call for all your real estate needs in the Birmingham area. With almost a decade of experience, Megan's knowledge and expertise can help you buy or sell your home today. So visit her website, MeganMPhillips.com. That's M E A. G-A-N-M phillips.com or call Megan at 205-602-7929. Again, 205-602-7929. A lot of the young guys, Jacquez Jones, Gavante Ruggs, playing a lot of snaps when at some programs they'd be redshirting right now, but instead they're already kind of getting baptized out there. That's what I'm saying. And uh, like I said, it, it goes back to it. Like, all right, guys, y'all, y'all see what what you did last year, and we couldn't even play for nothing. Now we now we got something. We got something with, to put a little more edge on us now. So rise up to the occasion. Let's run through some games. We got ten minutes or so left here on uh, the show today. Isaac Lutch be our uh, guest picker. We put these out every uh, Friday morning on the site at rebelgrove.com. Tennessee at number twenty-one Auburn this weekend, eleven a.m. 
SEC Network for that one. Auburn is favored by 16 and a half. Isaac, what are you, uh, what are you liking in that one? SEC West. You like Auburn? Auburn? Yes, sir. Offensively, not doing real well right now. Not scoring a lot of points. See, that's what I'm saying, man. I'm a different person when you do it. I'm different when you uh, come to these type of things. <laughs> I, we play in any championship games. I want the SEC to win. I don't care what team it is. If uh, we playing each other, I want the um, SEC West team to win. It's just, it's just how. I go. Oh, you pull for other SEC West I, schools. If, if we playing the SEC East team, I yeah. want the West to win, no matter what. If we pull for. Um, if we pull for um, – if we in a championship bowl game, any bowl game, I want the SEC to come out on top. What do you got in this one, Neil? What, what uh, Auburn? No, who do you got? Tennessee yeah, and Auburn, Neil. Yeah, I went I'm back a, and I'm forth. I'm about to go with Auburn, man. I went back and forth on this one. I think Auburn wins, but after talking to Jay Tate and some of the people who cover Auburn, I'm not sure that Auburn covers 16 and a half points. A um, lot of issues with their offense. Um a lot of concern about their offensive line. Jarrett Stidham playing poorly right now. So, like I said, Auburn wins, but there doesn't seem to be a confidence around that program yeah. that they can cover that big of a line. Yeah, yeah. it feels a little closer. Maybe we, uh, we think moving to this one, I've got Tennessee as well, at least covering Auburn winning, but Tennessee staying inside that two-and-a-half touchdowns. Number 14, Florida. They're a touchdown favorite at Vanderbilt, Isaac, 11 a.m., on ESPN. I thought the line would be bigger than this, but it's only seven. You got two SEC East teams playing each other. So what are you going to do? I'm going Gator, man. I'm going Florida. I don't like Vanderbilt. For the simple fact, I, you like I, Dan Mullen more than Vanderbilt? Nah, I just like Florida over Vanderbilt. Man. All right. Florida, Vanderbilt was a spoiler for us. <laughs> But, Vanderbilt uh, was kind of a pain at times. Yeah, they was. But um, nah, I, I believe I believe Dan Mullen getting them guys to. Um, Clicking down there, man. And uh, Florida actually got a good team. And uh, so, with that being said, I, I think I'll go with Florida with this one. Yeah, this feels like a trap line to me because I look at it and think Florida easily covers this. I know they've had some emotional games. Maybe they're due for a, a letdown, but, and it's 11 o'clock on the road and all that stuff. I just think Florida's significantly better than Vanderbilt, and they win by a couple of touchdowns. This feels like an easy game to me. Yeah, I kind of agree with that one. So here, I know which way Isaac's going to go, but number two, Georgia. They are seven-point favorites at LSU. 230 CBS, not a night game for LSU for once in a while. Um, here's a little stat for you. LSU hasn't lost a home game in October since 2009 against Florida. They, uh, they've won 20 in a row at home in the month of October, which means absolutely nothing this week because Georgia's going to win this game. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of contradict myself sometimes. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to go with Georgia over LSU. I'm not an LSU fan yeah. at all. Like, uh, no. So it's SEC West not named LSU? <laughs> yeah, um, in some cases. All right. But uh, not against Georgia, though. Um, I like Kirby Smart. I, I, like, I like the identity that he has brought to the Georgia Bulldogs. And um, with that being said, you know, I, I, I actually pick uh, George to be the personal favorite of the East again. So. Was Kirby one of the guys that recruited you? Yes, sir. You, so you know him pretty well. So you, so you like him? I mean, yeah, what, what, yeah. what kind of impressions of Kirby? He's straightforward, man. He matches, he matches Coach, uh, Coach Saban energy. I mean, <laughs> you think the guys had the best game of their lives, then you hear the interview and it's like, wow. Like, Coach, seriously? They did good. Coach, give him a chance. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I like, his, uh, I like his attitude and I like his approach to the game, man, no matter what. Number 22, Texas A&M, they're minus two, only two-point favorites at South Carolina, also 230. That's SEC Network, Carolina coming off the, a bit of a miracle win against Missouri if they got bailed out by the rain delays and different things last week. So Jimbo Fisher and A&M at South Carolina, they and m by two, Isaac. That uh, that first game Texas A and M played against Clemson really, really woke my eyes up with um, Texas A and M this year. I'm gonna go with Texas A and M. You like Texas A and M? I still like him. I'm gonna give up. His name is it Hill, the QB, the quarterback. What's the quarterback name? Uh, Kellen Mond now Mon, is at uh, is A and M. Yeah. Okay, and I and they got a receiver. They got a receiver. I feel like it's pretty good too. Yeah, they've had a lot of receivers. Mike Evans, Christian no, Kirk. I'm, I'm, talk, been, I'm talking about for this season. Um, this yeah. season they got a, a receiver I, I really like. So, what you got, uh, Neil? I went back and forth on this one. I think I settled on Texas A&M covering the two-point line. You did? Yeah. I, I, I started to go with Carolina, but I, I think all that's really left for Jimbo in year one is to get a big road win. And this feels like this is where it happens. Okay. Missouri plus 28. They're at number one, Alabama, 6 o'clock, Bryant-Denny Stadium 
on ESPN. They're going to win, Isaac. There's not even a doubt about that. But are they going to win by more than four touchdowns is the question. <laughs> Man, that's hey, – Alabama, they might put up five touchdowns. Oh, Missouri? Yeah, playing Missouri. They going to blow them out? They're going to blow them out, man. They're going to blow them out. Like, they're they're going to blow them out, but they, they keep taking Tua out of the game, like one series into the game. I, he hasn't they, played they, a snap on the fourth quarter yet. The game is over, man. I mean, it's, that's no discussion. Go on. If old, Look, that's another thing. If Ole Miss don't beat Alabama, I don't want nobody else to beat them. Like, keep on go, doing good for the, the SEC. Yeah. We need y'all. We need Bama. So, they, 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 make, the, they make me proud. Okay. Okay. I've actually got Missouri covering this because I think Drew Locke's good enough to score a couple touchdowns at the end (laughs) and make it sort of close. Alabama's going to win, but (laughs) just make it sort of close. Yeah. What did I pick? I can't even remember. He picked the same thing, I think. You got 49-24 on this one. Saban doesn't seem to have a – he doesn't seem to be interested in covering the line this year. Maybe he's mad at the fans for leaving early, and so he's making them lose money. But he's, he's letting games go from 50 points to 35 points in the fourth quarter. See, and, and Locke's good. Locke, you, Locke will score some points. You see, how you, you see how you're saying he allowing that to happen? Like, come is. on, man. That is, he is. Man, come I, on. I'm man. telling you. If they I'm could, a fan. They I'm could fan. go win 100 to nothing right now if they wanted to. Of they, course. They're, they're taking Tua out in pregame. He's not, they're not even letting Tua dress. Nobody. Hey, that, <laughs> Bama, man. I, I'm not going to say the RT word, but go ahead. All right, final game, Ole Miss minus six against Arkansas, uh, War Memorial Stadium, Little Rock, 6.30 p.m. for that one. I will ask you this, Isaac, because you played both places. Little Rock in 2012, Ole Miss seven and seven all time in Little Rock. They've only won in Fayetteville twice since Arkansas joined the SEC, those in 2000 and 2008. When they're in Little Rock, it doesn't have the same environment. It's a much more stale, stale thing. For the players, what's the difference between Little Rock and Fayetteville? Um... I guess it's I guess it's closer. I guess it's closer to home and um, it, atmosphere like, though the, the, better. The, the atmosphere a little bit better. It ain't, it ain't all as crazy as uh, Fairville. Fairville, it is. It's a great place to play too, man. But it's I don't think the rain is just as crazy in Fairville as it is in Little Rock. So I feel like Little Rock would be a better place for us to play. But it don't matter, man. Wherever we play, home or any away games, man, we gotta go out there and put up points. Guys gotta step up to the occasion. Let get us an SEC win. I've got Ole Miss winning a close one this weekend. I think it's going to be crazy. It's going to be high score. And there's going to be some turnovers. It's going to look like a lot of Arkansas Ole Miss games we've seen in years past. But I do think Ole Miss would pulls this one out in uh, in Little Rock, Mr. McCready. Yeah, I've got the same thing. I think it feels like it's Ole Miss's turn to win, but I'm not prepared to lay six points. These games have been so crazy and so close the last few years that it's it's almost impossible to think that it's not going to be more of the same this time around. Yeah, that's that's I feel you on that, man. But uh, guys, get out there and keep their eyes open, man. Make plays the way they should, man. I, I feel like we're gonna be okay, man. Um, Arkansas, we got to get this win. They've been a, a real thorn in our backs for the longest, man. And it's it's time to get this win, man. I'm calling it, you know, howdy tidy all the way. Ole Miss trying to get to five and two on the season. Remember, uh, Ole Miss baseball playing Delta State Saturday at one o'clock as well for the new fall games that are going on. Uh, going on. We'll have coverage of all that at rebelgrove.com. Have this up on Friday morning as well in the audio version for all the places that you guys uh, enjoy your podcast. So for the last 55 minutes or so, enjoy, really appreciate Isaac joining us tonight here at uh, Monkeys on the Square. They'll have the game on the TVs here on Saturday, 6.30 against Arkansas as we wrap up. So for Neil, Chase, Isaac, appreciate the, uh, the help tonight, and we'll talk to you again soon.